El Moro. For nearly 300 years, its guns struck fear into the hearts of would-be conquerors and extended Spanish domination over the Caribbean. Christopher Columbus may have thought that he discovered this island when he arrived and claimed it for the Spanish in 1492, but the Taino people, the ones that inhabited this region for a thousand years before he stumbled across it, may have something to say about that. They named this island Boriken. The Spanish called it Puerto Rico. In 1539, the Spanish chose this promontory overlooking San Juan Harbor as the spot to build the Castillo San Felipe del Moro. It would become the most important link in a chain of Castillo fortresses constructed to protect outposts of the Spanish Empire in Central and South America, known as the Spanish Main. Built mostly with the labor of Taino and African slaves, it would withstand many sieges and battles with other European powers over the 250 years it would take to complete. It would fall into enemy hands only twice, once for about a month to the English in 1598, and finally to the United States in 1898, when the Spanish handed it over to the U.S. at the end of the Spanish-American War. I love it when I can get up close enough to history to see it, feel it, and they've done a fantastic job of preservation and restoration here through the years. It's the Puerto Rican and the American flag that fly over El Moro today, but historically this is one of the many Spanish fortresses that dot the Caribbean, these island fortresses that they constructed back during the colonial period, and it's a really great opportunity to see um, what the daily lives of the soldiers were like. I'm here right now in a soldier's quarters and you get to see what their clothing was like. You get the tri-corner hat and their satchel and uh, rucksack and even their shoes at the bottom of the bed. I think their feet were kind of small. Considering its astounding natural beauty, it's hard to imagine that Puerto Rico was for a Spanish soldier sent to guard the gateway to the Caribbean, considered a remote and foreboding post. We love coming to places like Puerto Rico on our vacation and it's considered such a, a wonderful place. But if you were a Spanish soldier in the 1600s and got stationed here, first of all, you were probably an adventurer. Second of all, this was the end of the world. If you came here, you might not be expected ever to be seen back home again. El Moro is huge, one of the most iconic of the Spanish fortresses in the Caribbean, and needs time to be appreciated. Plan on spending hours exploring the endless passageways. I love exploring all the little nooks and crannies in places like this. Just look for every little stairwell and explore what's down and around the next corner. The top level provides some of the best views of the surrounding area, and the sun attracts some local visitors who enjoy sunning themselves on the warm stone battlements. This was, after all, a Spanish Castile, and so... Well, an important part of any military mission, religion. And here we are in the chapel, and every one of these forts happens to have them. Patron saint of the Navy, obviously. I'm just going to say a little prayer for myself that I can make it back up these stairs when I go down, because there's a lot of stairs between here and the bottom floor. As you head down into the lower levels of the fort, you'll discover what was, for me, one of the most interesting areas to explore. Now, I always have a nose for food, and of course, I found the kitchen. But it wasn't like any kitchen I've ever seen. This vast cavernous area is actually the kitchen for El Moro, and I had no idea that a kitchen had to be this big for a fort like this, but I guess with all the soldiers stationed here, they had to feed them and do all the cooking down here. And you see these cleaning and feeding and cooking troughs here. And there's spaces for livestock. And, and you can see where they could have been drying food here. And 
the Spanish Empire was so big that they were expected to source everything locally and forage for food. And ironically, the three pounds a day they were expected to subsist on was deducted from their pay. So I guess the army worked a little differently back then. Before you shed a tear for the Spanish soldier though, realize they ate much better than the slaves who were building this place. It smells like barbecue. We'd reached the bottom level and wanted to get down to see what El Moro might have looked like to an invader from the sea. So we headed out to walk the trail that runs along the perimeter of the fort. It's a beautiful, low difficulty walk that took us along the water at the foot of the 140 foot cliffs below the Castillo. For an attacker, it must have been an intimidating sight. Bring water if you go in the afternoon because it gets hot and the beautiful strips of beach that we passed by proved too tempting to resist. And that water was as nice as it looks. This is an example of how not to clear a cannon. Fuego! 